Hi, welcome back everyone. Wish you a very happy Christmas. Today I used the Basepack tutorial to show you how you actually can run a design that is bigger than one embroidery field to make a huge design via head selection. So this would all be programmed in the Basepack. Um, and here you see already that I start in the bottom right corner to position my frame. And then the first head will do the first part of the design automatically without any stop switches off head one jumps over to head two and finishes off the design so to actually get started we first go to the design head and define here our machine so click on here all the comments that is machines are listed up you can by the way also make here your own personal machine list so let's see i have a razor machine here this one double click and then it will be inside here and you say okay second thing we have here a design with head selection so this has to be active so we later have the icons there okay now i've already loaded up my picture that is actually in the right size of my embroidery field now what we have to do next is that we set our grid so we actually know where my design is within the embroidery field so I go to set grid and I want a repeat grid and you see it already took over the machine measurements. The vertical distance here is now 700 and I want to see lines. Activate here with display grid. Okay. And you see now it, it centers the zero point here in the picture. And this is the width of one head. I'll show you a little trick. This should be my head one. This will be my head two. So my zero point I actually want here in this corner. From the left top side, you drag it down here to the center point, release. Now here is your zero point. What we do now, here in the picture mode, we actually move the picture into the embroidery fields of the two heads. And like I said, this would be head one, this would be head two. So we can actually check where the edges of these two heads are, that we have an easy job to make them fit. Okay. Before we can do anything, we have to set our first stitch. I go to the digitizing mode. This one has to be active. And I put my start point right here in the corner so that we actually later have no problems to position our design in the frame. Now you see here my icons for the head selection become active. Now we have to actually define which head should work at what time. So imagine you have, I don't know, a forehead machine. You can decide if Head one and two should do something, head one and four at the same time. So all this has to be programmed according to your needs. Therefore, we have here this head selection icon. And then here, your global list will be always there when you start a new design. The local list will be what we need in our specific design here. So I give this one a name because I want head one to work. And here, I have to activate my head one. Click in the new line. This should be my head selection, head two, like this. And now I want to copy this one to my local list. Head one should work first, so I use this selection now. You see here, head selection one and repeat jump zero. Don't worry about the repeat jump for now, we're gonna discuss this in a moment. And now you can start to digitize the first half of your design. You can calculate here an overlap of one or two millimeters that is still in space within your frame. So I do this part first, and then I do this part here. Now I have to end here, enter, fixing stitch, trimming, move over here. Right, so now that all the first head is done, we now want to switch to the next head. 
Therefore, we go back here into my head selection and now pick head number two. Copy to local list and use head selection. Now take a quick look here. Head selection number two is active and we have a repeat jump minus one. Okay, imagine the following. This is head number one, head number two. Now I jump from this stitch here over to my other side. Actually, it would exceed my embroidery field. So I say minus one time the head distance so that it's not too long. Now imagine the other way around. I'm done with this side and I want to jump back to that side. I will go plus the width of my embroidery field. So the repeat jump normally is always right. So it knows from which head you jump to what head and then it adds up or reduces the stitch length that the embroidery field has. Now we can simply jump here, fix again, bit of overlap and continue with the second head. Once you're finished with head number two and your design is done, you would then go also here in the same corner for your endpoint. Now, in order to have this actually there, you have to go here to original and the endpoint also on original. Otherwise, it will make a super long stitch back to the corner of the first head. So that also means for you, once you load this into the machine and you see that the design is much bigger than your actual embroidery field, first thing I would check if I were you was if that is set up correct. Right, let's have a look what the design turned out. Here would actually be the border between the two heads, but because when we're digitizing we have like roughly one millimeter play, so we can actually cover these edges. Right, that's it for today. I was actually showing you a video on head selection, in our case on a two-head machine. If you have any questions about head selection, anything else, let me know, leave me a comment, send me a message, follow us on Instagram, YouTube. Um, if not, I thank you once again very much for watching and I hope you have a happy Christmas, you all stay healthy, so, and then we see you in 2021. Bye!